Hello everyone and welcome back to Georgia Paper Crafts. This is Amber and today I am doing two, two cards, Easter cards, um, using some older stamp sets from my stash. These are the Neat and Tangled, uh, this is the Neat and Tangled stamp set called Cottontail Cuties. This came out a while back and I'm not even sure if it's still available. Um, but I think it's adorable. I've made several cards in the past with it, but I wanted to use it again as, um, like I say, I don't have any new stamps and I was using older stamps from my stash. So I wanted to, if you watch my other video, you saw that I had been experimenting with my Tombow markers and this one I am uh, using them again. So the difference with this video though is I decided to try it doing the no line coloring. So I stamped all the images with antique 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 gosh I can't talk antique linen uh, distress ink. And as you can see it's a very light ink and then I'm just kind of going over everything and coloring it in using my Tombow markers and pulling the color out into the center or kind of going over it depending on how dark I want it to be. Um, I have several images. Actually, I, I have all the images, the two uh, images of the girls um, and the two bunnies along with some flowers that I have stamped out. I will only show you the coloring of two of these images and that's because I, I think something happened with my phone um, and it, I don't have the um, the footage of me coloring it. Um, I'm not sure if it. Sometimes I I guess I forget if if somebody uh, calls in the midst or something. It cuts off the the recording and and then I don't remember to turn it back on. But anyway, I only I only have this um, this image being colored um, for for you today. So. I'm just going through and using my Tombow markers and kind of, um, like I say, outlining the image and then kind of pulling the color in. in. Um, I actually found this quite easy. You know, I was very nervous about doing no line coloring, but this one actually wasn't too bad and I don't think it turned out too bad either. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. I will say that you do lose some of the image of the face, like the eye and the and the mouth, um, when doing it like this. But I will go back over it with a, a black marker to help, you know, highlight that once I'm finished with everything. And just kind of follow the lines of the image, and it makes it really easy. And it cover it the using the antique linen, it covers up pretty easily. Give it that no, no line look. Now, once I'm finished coloring all of this, I will cut them all out using the coordinating um, dies that come with the set, or you, you know you can purchase separately, um, but are available. And um, I, all of that is done off screen. But I will have enough images for two cards, and and you'll see me make two cards here with these. Again, I think this stamp set came out a couple of years ago, probably even more than a couple of years ago, maybe even four or five years ago. I'm not even sure. However, it's been one of my favorites. I just love these images and um, I think they're really darling. And like I say, it's it's nice to go back and, and um, look at what you have in your stash, because if you're like me, you have a big stash, and then pull out, uh, you know, the ones you haven't used in a while and and give them some love and instead of using the you know newest and latest greatest things and that worked for me here now what you can see is a lot of times if I feel like I've gotten um, the image too dark or put too much water down I'll dab it off with the um, paper towel that's off to the side I keep that available just to one, you know, rinse off my brush that I'm using, which is just a plain uh, brush um, that I'm dipping in some um, clean water. 
off to the side. And I also keep that paper towel to the side just in case I do need to sop up anything that I've, you know, put too much water down on. Or, um, you know, if I don't like or if I go outside the line, sometimes what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of extra water down there and then sop that up. And it, it almost like erases the, the color from uh, outside the line. It's kind of a neat little technique. So here I'm just coloring the bunny, kind of doing a little bit of light gray just to kind of give him a little dimension and um, some pink on the nose there in the cheeks and the ears. And um, all right, so um, as you can see, I've, I've finished that, but I've cut them all out and they're off to the side. Now I wanted to bring in this new thing that I do have. This is the stencil from Lawn Fawn. It's the one where you can stencil, you know, both the grass and then you can use it to stencil the sky. Well, it took me a few minutes to figure this out. I was initially stenciling the wrong side. I was stenciling with the edges up, as you can see on the top there. And then I realized, no, dummy, that that is the one that you're supposed to be, you know, you're supposed to be doing the other side. So finally got it right and um, used two different distress oxides. I used um, Twisted Citron and Mode Lawn. And then, so the neat thing about this stencil is the other side matches the one that you use perfectly. So you can put it down and ink the top of your image so that you don't get all that on there. Now, what I did notice was, unless you, I kind of had some white edges. It's kind of hard to see right here, but I do have a lot of white edges um, where it didn't go over it exactly. And I'll, I'll show you a little bit closer here in a few minutes. But what I'm also doing is bringing in this cloud um, stencil from Lawn Fawn, and I'm just rotating it. Um, to make some some clouds in the sky. I am using tumble glass and um, well, what color is that? Tumble glass and salty ocean to make those and I'm going to do another one here so you can see this time I've, I've got it down correctly and um, using the same colors and see, see how it lines up right there? So you line it up and then you bring in your top color and that covers up the stuff you've already covered. So it's really a neat stencil. But if you can see kind of the white, some white areas where I couldn't, I guess I moved it just a touch, um, the stencil. And so I had to kind of go back and, and figure it out and try to get rid of those. I didn't like it being so stark white, so I'm just kind of edging it a little bit more on the bottom there. But I'm essentially I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to use the Cloud Maker stencil um, and put some clouds in there. And I put this again. The clouds um, do the clouds using the um, salty ocean and it is a little bit more obviously a more vibrant color than the tumble glass and it, it's a little leaves some harsh lines so I do go back in with the tumble glass just to try to blend it all out and I'm real pleased with how that looked I did like it now once I'm finished with all of this these are actually um, going to be um, four bar, four bar card size. Okay. Ooh, that was a mouthful. Four bar card size. So, um, here I am just stamping my sentiments on each of them. It says happy Easter, uh, or excuse me, it says you're my, and on the top of each, and then on the bottom, one of them says honey bunny, and the other one says cottontail cutie. I have attached them to pre-made, um, card bases. Now these card bases I believe I've gotten at Paper Source. Um, 
One is a kind of a teal blue, the other is a gray. And once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and kind of figure out the placement of my images. I pop all of them up with some foam tape, and then I pop them onto the front. So I've got this one that says, you are my cottontail cutie, with the girl um, carrying the wagon of um, Easter eggs, along with the bunny looking up with her and holding the flower. I'm going to bring in the other one, with the girl holding the basket and the little... Um, bird and the bunny sitting off to the side with his carrot. It says you are my honey bunny. I'm going to also put an egg over to the side there. Then I decided to bring in some of these hearts that I had colored. I believe I colored them off of a different set. I'm not sure but um, I had them laying around and I want to kind of add them around. So I'm going to also bring in some unicorn rhinestones from my stash. I believe these are kitty pink plush unicorn rhinestones. And I'm, I'm just gonna kind of set them around. However I think I look, think it looks good. And I'm just attaching these using Brutus, the Brutus Monroe clear glue and uh, my jewel picker to help me get a hold of them. And that's it. I really like how these turned out. They turned out very cute. Here's a final look at both of the cards. I hope you enjoyed watching me make these two cards and I hope it encourages you to go ahead and shop your stash and find some older stamp sets that you want to use to make cards. Um, I hope everybody is doing well and staying safe and I hope that you will join me again in, in the next video. And happy Easter. Take care.